Good morning, this is Dr. McDaniel at GYN Corner. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist in New York City, and I'm bringing to you all things health related for women. Thank you for joining me at GYN Corner today. Uh, let's see, I'm continuing the thyroid information series, and today I'll be speaking about a fairly uh, fairly uh, less common or uncommon thyroid disorder and that's called subacute thyroiditis. Now subacute thyroiditis is due uh, to an inflammatory change of the thyroid. So um, most commonly it occurs after a viral infection. Uh, so mumps, the flu, um, or even just an upper respiratory viral infection, just the sniffles and a cold. So it's um, kind of triggered by your body's response or reaction, your immune system response or reaction to an, an inflammatory uh, viral infection. And then in response to that viral infection, the thyroid starts to uh, become overactive. It swells and it enlarges. And unlike other forms of thyroid disease or thyroid disorders, with subacute thyroiditis, the thyroid is large and swollen and it's also painful. So most uh, people, predominantly women, who have thyroid disorders or thyroid diseases or hyperthyroidism, their thyroid feels totally normal, except it's enlarged or it's nodular or lumped up, but it's not painful. In subacute thyroiditis, it's quite painful, exquisitely painful, due to the inflammatory response uh, from that viral viral infection. Uh, again, as is all of the thyroid disorders, it's most common in women, and it's predominantly middle-aged, so 40, yes, 40 is considered middle-aged, 40 to 50-year-old women is the most common. Um, and along with the pain of the thyroid, uh, for some people, that pain will progress, not just sit at their thyroid, but it will progress through the neck and even up through the upper jaw and the ear uh, along the lymphatic drainage. So along uh, some of the lymph nodes, of course, will be enlarged because it's fighting that inflammatory infection. It's an inflammatory response, but along that lymph drainage is where all the tenderness and the soreness and the sensitivity is. Uh, the lymph system is kind of like the vacuum cleaners of our body. So they try to clean up any infection or um, it's a defense mechanism. So it has just like our blood vessels have uh, channels or tubes. Uh, the lymph system has channels or tubes to send your immune defense system to an area where your body has to fight an infection. Now, the pain with the subacute thyroiditis usually lasts for quite a while. It lasts on average, uh, it could be as short as one month, on average it's two to three months, and very rarely will it last past three months. Along with subacute thyroiditis will be kind of nondescript viral uh, symptoms. So it'll be fever, with or without chills, uh, fatigue, weakness, uh, muscle aches, muscle tenderness, soreness, and then because the thyroid can get quite enlarged and firm, uh, some people will have a hoarse voice because the thyroid is pressing on their larynx or their voice box, and they'll have difficulty swallowing because it's enlarged and it's also pressing on the esophagus. Now, the subacute thyroiditis has two um, I guess two parts of it, so actually three parts of it. So it's the initial part where uh, the person has the flu or the viral infection that triggers the thyroid disorder. And then the uh, first couple of months is always going to be um, that inflammatory process occurring with the sensitive enlarged thyroid and the pain. And then the next step will be because the thyroid inflammatory uh, response is to become overactive, the thyroid becomes, uh, it increases activity as it enlarges, and you have symptoms, signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. And those signs or symptoms are always going to be uh, as if someone took 
10 shots of espresso. So it's going to be uh, increased jitter, feeling jittery, increased nervousness, anxiety, uh, heart beating rapidly, blood pressure is increased. Uh, it will be weight loss. That's the only good thing about it. It'll be some weight loss. And um, for some people, um, um, I feel like I'm missing something. So jittery, um, anxiety, and some confusion. Of course, there you go. Apropos, some mental confusion. Uh, so those are all some of the signs and symptoms of the hyperthyroid activity. And then that will actually start to wear off and the person will become hypothyroid. So it's kind of like their um, the thyroid starts to get tired of uh, being so hyperactive and then it becomes hypothyroid. So then you'll have uh, lethargy, uh, fatigue, weight gain, and um, uh, feeling cold, uh, temperature intolerance, and some swelling uh, edema, as we call that. Now, there are actually four different types of subacute thyroiditis. I've written those out so I don't miss them. The first one is granulomatous, and that's just kind of the standard one after any kind of viral infection. And that has the parts, the initial viral uh, signs and symptoms, then the hyperthyroid, and then the hypothyroid. And there's postpartum, so after delivery. Partum is after delivering a baby. So after delivering a baby, a uh, small percentage of women will have subacute thyroiditis. And it's usually going to occur about a year after that delivery occurred. So it'll be about a year after the delivery, and it lasts about a year and a half. So about 18 months on average is when they go through that whole process of hyperthyroid and then hypothyroid. The third one is lymphocytic. That's also after the delivery of a baby, so it's also postpartum, and it usually occurs faster. It usually occurs within three months of a delivery. So within three months of a delivery, um, they'll start to have the flu-like symptoms, and then the hyperthyroid, and then the hypothyroid, and that whole process is usually shorter with the lymphocytic. It usually only lasts a few months. So six months to nine months or so. And the last one is what uh, what we call palpation subacute thyroiditis. That one's super rare amongst the rare scenario of the subacute thyroiditis anyways. And that's due to trauma of the thyroid, surgery, um, injury, or um, any kind of damage, tissue damage to the thyroid. It mounts this uh, inflammatory response, which is a subacute thyroiditis. So, um, as all other thyroid diseases and disorders, the evaluation is always going to be the same. <coughs> it's going to be a um, sonogram and blood work and the signs and symptoms of the patient and examining the thyroid to see if it's enlarged or not. And the treatment is going to be what we call symptomatic or palliative. It's going to be painkillers, pain medicine, uh, anti-inflammatories to decrease the inflammatory response and the pain of the thyroid, uh, ibuprofen and aspirin. Tylenol is not a good one, but ibuprofen and aspirin are great. Then oftentimes we'll give steroids, corticosteroids to help decrease that swelling and pain because the steroids will help counteract or fight the inflammation. That's usually prednisone, what we call a prednisone taper over several weeks. And um, approximately uh, 5%, uh, only 5% of people who have the subacute thyroiditis will have actually a, a significant amount of tissue damage to their thyroid that it becomes permanently uh, underactive. So they'll have a permanent hypothyroidism. So I hope that's been helpful information on another thyroid disorder, another uh, entity within the, the realm of thyroid problems that's subacute thyroiditis. Thank you for watching today at GYN Corner. Please hit the follow button if you enjoy the information that I'm presenting on Facebook. Give me a thumbs up to, that you like it and then check out the YouTube channel. Please subscribe and like for the channel. And if you enjoy the podcast GYN Corner, please leave, please rate and please leave a review to let others know what you enjoy about GYN Corner and it will help promote it so other people can get hopefully very useful information on women and health uh, health disorders. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.